All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you. Please invite your friends. And uh, uh, it is the morning for some people. Good afternoon, good evening, depending where are you. Uh, you know, uh, when you read the the Muslims' articles about uh, about Allah, one of the things they claim that their God is all knowledgeable, and actually the Quran keeps saying that all over. He is always all knowledgeable. Uh, but me, myself, I could not find anything knowledgeable about this God. So we'll try not to make the video long. We'll try to, make, to keep it short. Anyone can claim to be knowledgeable. And what I notice that, uh, you know, uh, Muslims usually, their knowledge is based on repeating, not about knowing. As an example, if you ask a Muslim about the Quran, he might be able to recite verses for you, but he do not even know what they are saying, and he don't even understand the language. So here we have a knowledge, which is a blind knowledge, which means you know nothing. It's like a, uh, actually the Quran uh, said something which is interesting. Present to me Muslims and present to me Muhammad. Look what the Quran says. Let me find the verse. Chapter 62, 62 verse number 5. It is that this is about the similarity of those who carry books in their back, but they are donkeys. Do you see it? So, there is many people, they carry books. The translation here is not really, it's funny, kind of funny. Let's change, change the translator. <clears throat> you will see right away that the Quran here, as if it is speaking about those who claim to have knowledge in Islam. Each time I debate any of them, I notice the, the, this is why I, you know, I use the word donkey, and some of you maybe is not in favor of such a word. But the Quran itself using it. If the Muslim he complain about me using the word donkey, well, that's mean your prophet and your, your God is rude. If somebody carry books, but he cannot understand them, and he do not even know how to read them. But he can recite them. Obviously, he is a donkey. Unless you are a Muslim and you don't agree with your own book. And actually, <clears throat> I noticed that the first donkey we encounter when we speak about donkeys is the one who wrote the Quran. I cannot say this is Allah because I believe Allah does not exist and he never wrote a word there. As an example, <clears throat> if you read a chapter like this, let us find the verse. All right. Chapter 66, verse number 3. Chapter 66, verse number 3. When the prophet disclosed a matter in confidence, to one of his concerts and she then delivered the, the secret to other women and Allah made it known to him he confirmed part therefore and he did not confirm the other part I mean or did not receive the other part or did not know the other part I mean if you read this verse, I mean, this is the most silly, stupid verse ever, ever. If Muhammad is the one, he is the one who mentioned the secret. How this is a secret? And Allah told him the secret. He is the one who told his wife. Imagine I say to you, I told my wife something. 
and then my wife she told my other wife what I told my wife and then the other wife she told the other wife and the other wife told the other wife and then Allah told me the secret but I am the one who said the secret Do you see how much Allah is all-knowing? So now Allah is the one who told Muhammad the secret which he said first time to his wives. What, what secret is that? If you go and read the Muslim interpretation, <clears throat> you will find something very funny. This is Ibn Kathir. And by the way, Ibn Kathir in English is not the same as Ibn Kathir in Arabic. This is the page of Ibn Kathir translating this, uh, the Ibn Kathir translation, or let us say interpretation. You will not find where it says what it says in Arabic. If we go to Arabic, you will see that this is about Muhammad. Speaking about something. Disclosed, disclosed a matter of confidence. And you will see how the Muslims they fabricate lies, and especially when they translate in English. In English, the, the Arabic, the Ibn Kathir is totally different from uh, from 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 uh, uh, Arabic one. Here they are saying that the Prophet he told his wives that he is drinking honey. In Ibn Kathir in Arabic, it says that the Prophet was having sex with a woman. She is the slave in the bed of his wife. Both of them they are Ibn Kathir. Which one is the true? So look what happened. In the Ibn Kathir in English, they lead all this part. <clears throat> Let me show you. All this part is taken off from Ibn Kathir. And they left the part which is speaking about the honey. Here it says in Arabic that the wives of Muhammad, they found Muhammad having sex with his slaves in their bedrooms. And the wife, she said to Muhammad, Ay Rasulullah fi bayti wa ala firashi, O Prophet of Allah, in my house and in my bed. <clears throat> And here we ask ourselves why in Ibn Kathir in English all of this is taken off because Muslims they always try to hide the truth. This is why I say when somebody learn Islam from English translation, he learned nothing. Are we following? If you are a person who learn Islam from English translation, you do learn zero, especially if the translator is a Muslim. Honesty is not there. Now, <clears throat> imagine if the wives of Muhammad, they are fighting over Muhammad having drinking honey. What that is a business, what is a big deal for Allah to make a verse about it? I mean, how silly this God, the one who created the galaxies, he have time to talk and to discuss that Muhammad, he don't like honey. What is that? And look how, how the statement is. So the prophet, he told his wife, and the wife, she told the other wife, and the wife, she told the other wife, and then the, the news came back to the prophet, and Allah informed the prophet about what the wives are saying. But he is the one who told them the secret. The Quran, not only a silly book, it's a stupid book. Allah knows best. <clears throat> As an example, who is the one who knows what is inside inside the womb? <clears throat> Only Allah. Only Allah knows if it is male or female. But we know 
that Muhammad when he made this verse he never thought that time will come and people not only can know what the baby will be in advance but even they can decide the gender of the baby Allah knows that which every female birth and that which the womb observe and that which they grow and everything with him is in measured but how Allah he knew <clears throat> what is in the baby what let us say what is the gender of the baby if you remember just today we mentioned that Muhammad he said if the man have orgasm first the baby will be a boy If the man have, if the woman have orgasm, the baby will be a girl. So we notice that all the connection about Allah, all knowing, especially when speaking about science or things, etc., is nothing but garbage and have nothing to to do with the truth. It's just an empty statement that Allah He knows. What Allah He knows, nothing. We discuss, we study, we find that Allah not only He do not know, Allah is a liar. Allah knows how the baby is made in the Quran. So he said the sperm became the became a, a congealed blood, the congealed blood became a lump, and the lump became a, a, a bones. And then Allah he closed the bones, which is absolutely false. But the knowledge of Allah go beyond stupidity. <clears throat> because you notice that the knowledge of Allah is taken from the knowledge of somebody else, as an example. You remember we have a guy who called me just two days ago he came claim he called himself Ustaz from Nigeria when we spoke about the Quran he said they are asking thee about the Quran in chapter 18 verse number 83 I will tell you something nobody knows and then Allah told us that the Quran is a person he Allah himself who gave him the power to control the world and this is Alexander the Great and then he followed a road that's fantastic and then he found where the Sun set and he found it sitting in a murky water that is a knowledge nobody knows so Allah for sure only he he know this that the Sun set in the murky water and he found it there and we explained to you that the Muslim in order to avoid the embarrassment here they say oh it's looked like he saw it in a murky water it's not the one is talking here is not even Zulqurnayn the one is talking is Allah and he's reporting exactly what happened he found it not he saw it not he saw as if it is he found it sitting in a muddy water then he changed his direction this the man Alexander the Great until he reached the rising place of the Sun so the Sun have a place where the Sun rise this is not not only stupid knowledge this is beyond the stupidity so Allah he confirmed to us that there is a sitting place for the Sun there is a rising place for the Sun but all of us we knew that the Sun rise everywhere and the Sun set everywhere but and by the way the Sun never set and never rise I can accept that as, as a phrase we say every day the Sun rise but in reality the Sun never rise it is the earth going around itself and we showed you before how Muhammad explained that the Sun goes every day from the east to the west and then prostrate itself at the throne of Allah and go in the muddy water this is why Muhammad he said in the hadith that the Sun sit in the muddy water And for sure Muhammad he when he said that he got this knowledge from Allah so this is knowledge nobody knows that the Sun set in the murky water additional to that Allah his knowledge go beyond imagination so Allah can tell you what will happen to you tomorrow but Allah always fail as an example Allah he said to the Muslims <coughs> 
that if one of you, one hundred of you, with patient can fight one thousand, and then the Muslims they went to war, as we see in chapter eight, verse number sixty-five. They went to war and they could not make it. The promise of Allah was shish kebab. Allah is not all knowing. So you will see here Allah, he is correcting himself. So he say, as you see in the screen, right away after they came from the battle and they got busted, Allah, he said, now Allah, he found that you have a weakness. Now he found the weakness you have. So the weakness Allah did not know. Before Allah was was sure, he says, O Prophet of Allah, urge the faithful to fight, to kill. If there are 20 among them uh, uh, with determin uh, determination, they will vanquish 200. And if there are 100, they will vanquish 1,000. That's wonderful. This is mean 1 to 10. 1 to 10. And here you will see, it says, and by the way, translation is not right. In Arabic, it says, Al -ana Allahu ankum. And now, for in the moment, Allah, He lightened your task. But we will read the translation as it is. God has lightened your burden as He knows are, you are weak. Okay, hold on. So, when Allah, He gave them this order, He do not know. And look how they fabricate the translation. In Arabic, it doesn't say, Allah has burdened your... Uh, 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 like your task because uh, he knows that you are weak it says and now he knew we change the translator this is why we have always to play the game of changing the translator because no Muslim give you an honest translation all of them they do their best to fabricate and to lie and to cover up <laughs> do you see guys the word now in the first translation, the word now was not there. Do you notice now how it appears? Suddenly, it's a magic. All what we did, we just changed the translator. So where was now before? Why now before it, uh, it disappeared? Now Allah has lightened your ta burden. And now, actually, this is not, now goes for both. And now uh, 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 he know, or he knew, or he knew that you have a weakness. Okay, hold on. When Allah, he gave them that 100 can fight 1,000, he do not know. So what do you mean now, Allah, now, he knew that they have, or he just found out that they have weakness? What 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 is the point? What happened? Why you say to them what 100 can fight 1,000? And now the verse after it right away, you say to them, okay, you know what? I think to 100 is too much. Now we have to change it. So what is going to happen? 100 can fight 200. So, so what is the change? from 1 to 10 to 1 to 2. Do you see, guys, the knowledge of Allah? If Allah is all knowledgeable, and He says, and not only about all knowledgeable, by the way, because here it's more than about knowledge. If, if God, He is God, if He promised me, the Bible says, if God is with me, who could be against me, right? Like this is what it says. So if I am, if I am sponsored by God, who cares about how many they are? I will be victorious. So here you see, Allah, he claim knowledge. And Allah calculate his numbers. He have a calculator. And he, in his calculation, the first calculation numbers, he came with that, okay, you, Abdul, if you fight, one can kill ten. Then you, what, you go to war, your ass get busted. And then they came back and say, Muhammad, what happened? You told us that one, uh, one of us can fight, uh, uh, you know, ten. So Muhammad, he have to come with an answer. So he said, now, now Allah, he lightened your task and he now found that you have a weakness. Where is the knowledge of Allah? There is a Muslim who defend Islam. I don't think anyone can defend Islam. There are potatoes. <clears throat> The God who have knowledge, he will not make such a mistake. Secondly, the God who have a power, it doesn't matter how many they are. If God, he promised them victory, they will be victorious. 
changing the numbers should not change the fact and God he changed the numbers if you if you if you look with me nothing changed in the requirement in both requirement it says here if they have if they are 20 they will come shall uh, overcome 100 and if there's a hundred they will overcome a thousand as long they have steadfast but the second verse is the same condition nothing changed they have the same the condition is the same the condition of victory is to steadfast So where is Allah the all-knowing? Now for sure we can mention tons of mistakes in the history. Even Allah, he could not quote the name of Jesus correctly, the name of uh, uh, Abraham correctly. Once he say Ab Abraham, once he say Ibrahim, once he say Jibreel, once he say Gabriel. Uh, 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 Mary is the sister of Aaron, the father of Moses is Amran. The father of Mary is Amran, which is a stupid. Uh, I mean, it's it's a it's a mist. Haman is the minister of Pharaoh, but Haman is in Iraq. What Haman had to do with the Pharaoh? Uh, 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 Luqman uh, 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 is an Egyptian, but Luqman is uh, uh, you know is an Israeli. Uh, not a single information is true. Now, more of the knowledge of Allah. He speak about things which is full of fictions as an example the story of Suleiman and the flying carpet and Suleiman he have a bird is missing and Suleiman looking for a woman she have hair no no hair in her legs and Suleiman he have a freed which is a genie in the ball and Afrit uh, he said to him I can go and I can get you the, the, the throne of all uh, of this queen in, in a speed of uh, like before you blink your eye but all those are knowledge of Allah nobody knows except him but if you go and do a little search we will find that all those stories are coming from the legions of the Jews the flying carpet the ring of Suleiman Suleiman is speaking to the ants uh, 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 genie serving Suleiman all those are legions the Jews they used to tell them to their kids Muhammad he took them and he claimed that this is from the knowledge of Allah So when we speak about the knowledge of Allah, we find nothing but a mockery to the God of Allah or the God of Islam. And always there is something missing in the stories. Muhammad, because he is copying from the Jews, he do not know what he's talking about. As an example, here it says, the one with whom has was the knowledge of the scriptures said, who is that guy? I will give the Muslim 1,000 years to tell me the name of this guy. Who is this guy who have the knowledge of the scriptures? And he is exist in the time of Suleiman. And if he is the one who have the knowledge of the scripture, so Suleiman was what? Don't you Muslim, you claim that he is a prophet? Who is of them? He knows the knowledge of the scriptures. The prophet or someone else? Obviously, the Quran confirmed that this guy is the one who have the knowledge of the scripture, not Suleiman. But yet Suleiman is the prophet, supposedly. So, the more you read, the more you 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 uh, you know you, you go through the, the the madness of this cult, you will find that everything there is stupid and it's just a collection of fairy tale stories. But yet the Muslims they claim that Allah have knowledge. Here you will see that this woman, she when he arrived to her, and uh, You know, she saw like a, a, a big building and uh, looked like a pool. And then she thought it's like water. She should lift her legs up or let us say her skirt up 
and then Suleiman he saw that she have a hairy legs and he was disgusted but don't worry be happy the one who did that it was the trick of the devils the genie because they don't want Suleiman to marry from this woman so they made her look like she have a growing hair in her legs and Suleiman will be disgusted and obviously this is from the knowledge of Allah Allah have a lot of knowledge right and if you continue reading the story you will see I mean all all uh, uh, you know and here uh, you don't I don't know how many of you have my books if you read them you will see the story the story is getting so amazing it's so stupid uh, according to the Muslims according to Allah and his prophet that this woman who have a Balqis or Sheba uh, she was a daughter of a guy who is a minister and later she became a queen uh, what happened that this guy the minister he did marry from a witch uh, from a G female genie so his daughter Balqis is half genie half a human true story and the king who used to be the minister working for he sleep with all the females wives of his ministers so this minister he hide that he have uh, he is married and he have a daughter uh, and how he married simply once he was walking and he was you know uh, like in the market uh, a guy he said to him why you're not married he said to him I cannot really marry he said to him why he said because I have a king who sleep with the wives of his uh, employees so the man he told him don't worry I have a daughter and my daughter is a genie if you marry her your king cannot do that and then this woman uh, to make it simple uh, like one day the king he found out about her and he ordered her father to be arrested and then he came to her house and then when he came to her palace, he said, she, she said to him, are you going to enter with your men? That's the shame. You cannot do that. You should come to me alone so we can have sex. So the guy, he entered alone. And when he got alone, she cut his head with her shoe. And obviously, shoes, women are dangerous since the beginning of time. And this is why I advise you, if you want to meet women who they are, if you have a date, I mean, don't ever let them get inside the place you are going to dash like coffee shop or something don't ever let them get in and they are wearing their shoes because women's shoes are very dangerous now tons of stories fabrication collection of fictions stupidity and you know the Muslims they believe whatever written there now this is the story was for centuries and Muslims always they open their mouth when they read those stories but what the Muslims say is today after they go to universities and after they learn and they come to the West and they go and in the age of computer what they do today they say we reject those stories but they cannot as you see we have the fingerprint all over here you cannot deny the chapter you know all the Quran is nothing but fictions and stupidity so what you will deny exactly you will deny the Quran, you will deny Allah, you will deny Muhammad, what you will deny? A king who check his birds and he have an army of birds. A king who heard the ant and the ant she was saying to the other ants, hide otherwise Suleiman will kill you. How the ant even she knew his name and the ants don't talk. So you can run away from interpretation. You can you can deny hadith by fabrication, saying, "Oh, this is a lie," but it's not. And what you can do about the Quran? Suleiman he smiled, laughing at her speech. Since when the ants they talk? They are deaf and they are dumb. They they don't they, they are deaf. They don't hear, and they don't talk. Ants or all the creatures they communicate, yes, but not by I mean by not by talking. They have two ways of communication, vibration and chemical. That's it. There's no talking. But Suleiman, he heard her speech. A 
and here you know by the way I find the story not only stupid but I mean Suleiman he heard only one ant. what about the rest of the ants what they were saying only one ant. she said hi and this is the only thing Allah he was find it funny so he decided to report for us I mean why Allah even is saying that to us if the one is there is talking I mean imagine we have a king he have an army we have history now is made and now Allah he stopped look, look at this ant. what she said when he was in the valley of the ants buffering okay i am not sure why let us see why is it better now no maybe from my side uh, it's very cold. Is my voice coming? Is my voice coming? Mm. No, I think because of the cold outside is very cold. All right. Let us hope it's going to come back. Do you hear me, guys? Mm. Okay, let us see what we will do. Hold on. 